Credit spreads are a big part of most options traders arsenal. And in this video, you'll find out the top three reasons why, as well as learning all the basics you need to trade them. I'm Mike Bellafuri, and we're one of the top proprietary trading firms located in New York City and proud to have developed number seven and even eight figure per year traders. We hope you discover this is the top YouTube channel to help you grow your trading account. Hi, I'm Seth Freuberg, and I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's options trading desk here in Manhattan. And the traders on our desk are trained to utilize option strategies that have much higher win rates than ordinary day or swing trades on equities. And the reason that this is possible is that options have very unique properties that allow you to create price zones, sometimes giant price zones over which a trader will make the maximum possible profit on a trade. In other words, the trader doesn't have to be pinpoint accurate about where the price of the stock or index is headed in order to make a profit. He just has to pick a price zone. And it can be quite wide if you want. And as long as the price ends up inside that zone, you'll win the trade. And this may not sound possible, but I assure you that it is. So you're going to want to stick around to see how this can be done. And the great part is that the strategy we'll be teaching you in this video is the simplest option spread of all. It's called the credit spread. If you're brand new to options trading and you don't know much about options and how they work, we've created a video for you to understand options basics. And if you click on the video appearing now on your screen, it will lay the groundwork for understanding the strategy we're gonna be teaching you in this video. Then when you're finished, you can come back and watch the rest of this video. Let's dig into how credit spreads work. So there are two basic types of credit spreads, put credit spreads and call credit spreads. So put credit spreads are where you sell a put option higher on an options chain and buy a put option below that lower on the same options chain. And for reasons you'll understand shortly, this is a bullish trade. So for example, let's say that we were bullish on the SPX index on June 8th over the next month. And with the index opening at 4270, let's say that we decided to open up an options chain expiring about a month later on July 7th. And we went ahead and sold one of those 4270 puts for a price of $48.25. And we simultaneously bought a put on the exact same options chain, the July 7th options chain, we bought a 4260 put lower on the options chain for a price of 4475 for protection. So just like we explained earlier, having sold a put option higher on an options chain and bought one lower on that same chain, when we do that, we have executed a put credit spread, which is a bullish options trade. Why do we call it a credit spread? Well, think about it. Put options on indexes pay off when the index closes below the strike price of the option on the day that it expires. So a put option higher up on an options chain has a higher chance of paying off than an option lower on the options chain. And so the seller of the option has to charge more to protect himself because he's taking more risk than the risk of the put options below it. And we see this when we look at the cash flow of the put credit spread, because when we sold that put up at 4270, we got a price of 4825. But remember, remember, index options pay off $100 per point below a put's strike price. So we multiply that by 100. And so we received $4,825 for selling that put. But then we turned right around and bought the 4260. But notice that its price is lower. It's $44.75. And that makes sense, right? Because the market barely has to go down to get below the $42.70 strike price, whereas the market has some more work to do if it wants to get down to the $42.60 strike. And so the risk of the market dropping below that price is a little less. So the puts price is a little less. And so that's why we have positive cash flow when we sell a put credit spread. In this case, $350 of positive cash flow. Okay, so now let's move forward to July 7th, the day the options comprising the put credit spread expired. And as you can see, the index did indeed rally over that next month, closing at 4401.26. And so because this is the day that the options expire, we can actually put a final value on the trade 
which is pretty simple to do because starting with the cash we first received for selling the spread, the $350, we then take a look at the value of the 4270 put we sold, and we see that it expired uh, 131.26 points below where the index closed. And so since index puts only pay off if the index closes below the put strike price on the day the option expire, then that put expires with zero value, as of course does the one we bought at 4260, which is even farther below the index's closing price. And therefore, both options expire worthless, and we're just left with the cash that we first collected as our profit, $350. And so now you can see why this is considered a bullish trade. And that's because we want both of the put options to expire worthless, because then we just pocket that initial credit we received. And so the key th thing to remember about put credit spreads are that as long as both put options expire worthless, we will pocket the full credit of the initial trade. And that will, of course, happen as long as the market closes above the strike prices of both options, which in this case is exactly what happened. And because both options were both slightly below where the market opened on the day the trade was started, a bullish move after we enter the trade, as happened in this case, is going to result in a full win. Now that we've covered the put credit spread, we'll move on to the second type of credit spread, the call credit spread, which is a bearish trade. And it is constructed by selling a call option, this time lower on an options chain, and buying a call option above that with both options again expiring on the same day, thus appearing on the same options chain. And so by way of example, suppose that you became bearish on the SPX index on February 1st. Well, if at the end of the day, on that day, you sold a call with a strike price of 41.20, just above where the index closed for a price of 74.85, and you bought a call option 10 points higher at the 41.30 strike for the protection of the spread for a price of 69.15, then you've entered into a call credit spread, a bearish trade. And similar to the logic we covered on the put credit spread before, in this case, because calls pay off if the index closes above the call strike price, the calls lower on the options chain, the 4120s, are priced higher than the calls higher on the options chain, the 4130s. Because again, it will take more of a move for the market to close above the 4130s than the 4120s. And so the market makers charge more for the lower calls and less for the higher ones. And so that's why it's called a call credit spread, because as you can see from the calculation, selling the calls with a lower strike price, the 4120s, and buying the calls with a higher strike price, the 4130s, result in a credit, just like the reverse was true with put credit spreads. The call credit spread will always be a credit because the short calls, the ones we sell, are always going to have a lower strike price than the calls we buy with that higher strike price. And in this case, as you can see from the calculation, it brought in a credit of $570. And again, moving to a month later on March 1st, the index did in fact sell off closing at $39.51.39 on the day the options expired. And so just like with the put credit spread, it's easy to analyze the result of this trade because, again, starting with that initial $570 credit, you can plainly see that both the 4120 short call and the 4130 long call, both of those expired worthless because they're located way above where the market closed on the day they expired, resulting in a trade win of $570, the initial cash flow. So now that we understand how call and put credit spreads work, let's zero in on why professional options traders love trading them. First of all, when you enter into a credit spread, you are creating a giant zone of price outcomes over which you'll make a profit on the trade, and not just any profit, but the maximum profit you can make on that trade is available anywhere along that price zone. Why? Well, think about it. Let's look back at that call credit spread we were just discussing. Remember, the short call was located at 4120 and the long call was located at 4130. And so what you need to realize is, is that at any price, any closing price from 4120 down to literally zero, 
you would make the full $570 profit on the trade. Why? Because if the index closes anywhere below the lowest option, the short call in the case of a call credit spread, you're going to make your full $570 credit. So that means even if you only get a mild pullback, you get the full reward of the trade. In fact, amazingly, even if the index had closed exactly at 4120, essentially a zero price move from the beginning of the trade to the end, you still would have made the full profit on the trade. And so the truth is that the call credit spread is really a neutral to bearish trade because at any price between no movement at all and a giant sell-off results in you're still making the full profit. Okay, so first of all, the credit spread gives us a giant range of outcomes over which we can make money, and even no movement gives us our full profit, as we just discussed. But there's a second extremely important reason that traders love credit spreads, and that is even if the stock or index whose options you're trading goes flat out against you, you can still make money on the trade. And so let's look back at the put credit spread we showed you earlier. And remember, like we taught you earlier, the put credit spread wants the market to go up because then both puts would expire worthless. And so you remember that the short put was located at 4270 and the long put was located at 4260. And so as we discussed before, we received a $350 credit. And further, any closing index price above 4270 was going to result in a full win of that 350. But what would happen if the index had closed below 4270? Does that mean we're automatically going to take a loss? Well, not necessarily. And you must be wondering, what could I possibly mean? Because I said that this was essentially a bullish trade. But now I'm bringing up a bearish scenario where I'm implying that there are cases where you'd still win. How can that be possible? Well, Let's take a look at an example. Suppose that the index were to close down from its original price when we entered the trade, and on the day it expired, it actually closed at 42.68, two points below the location of that 42.70 put. Well, as you can see this time, we need to calculate the payoff of the 42.70 put. So we subtracted strike price of 42.70 from the closing price of 42.68, which gives us two. And we multiply that by 100 per point that we need to pay out under the put we sold, resulting in a payout of $200 for that put. But remember, we own that 4260 put, but that one actually expires worthless again because it's actually located eight points below where the index closed. So that pays us nothing. And even though we owe a payout on the put we sold and we got nothing from the put we bought, the result is still a little surprising, and that is we still made $150 on the trade. Why? Because the payout on the option we sold is less than the initial credit for the entire credit spread. And so is it really true to call put credit spread a bullish trade? No, it's not really true. As we just demonstrated, it's a bullish trade, but it's also a neutral trade, such as when the index closes exactly at 1420, and it's even a slightly bearish trade, like in the example that we just gave you, where the index closes on expiration day at 4268. And for the exact opposite reasons, you can't really call a call credit spread a purely bearish trade, because while it certainly is primarily a bearish trade, it's also neutral when the index closes exactly at the location of the short call. And even slightly beyond that location, the call credit spread can still make money as long as the payout on the short call isn't more than the credit received for the call credit spread. Which brings us to the final reason that traders love trading credit spreads, and that is you not only have a giant zone of profit you create every time you enter into a credit spread, but you can locate that giant profit zone literally anywhere that you want so that you can heighten your chance of making a profit by locating the position at an advantageous price point that you pick. So let me show you a vivid example of what I'm talking about. So let's head back to March 10th of this year. And as you can see, the RUT index, the index of small cap stocks, started the year with a strong rally, reaching 2,000 before beginning a descent 
in February, which continued into early March. And by March 10th, it had sold off back down to 1772.70. So suppose that a trader believed that while the sell-off may continue, it's likely to find support at the 1720 level from which it last bounced in early 2022. And so if you had that bias, let's take a look at what would happen if you pulled up an options chain expiring about a month later on April 6th and decided to sell a put credit spread, which remember is a bullish trade, but you decide to locate your short put, the put you are selling, which remember is a bullish trade, but you decide to locate your short put, the put you're selling, where you want to place it, which is where you think the index is likely to bounce. You see, if you believe that the index will bounce at the 1720 level, then that is the equivalent of believing that any puts located below that strike price are likely to expire worthless, which is the goal of credit spreads, as we've demonstrated to you. If a put or call credit spread expires worthless, you get to keep all of the cash that you originally received, as we discussed. And so selling that short put at 1720 and buying that long put at 1700 for protection, that would be a trade you'd make if you had the bias that the index likely will find support at 1720. And from a cash flow standpoint, you can see that we brought in 3190 for selling the 1720 put for a price of 3190 while turning around and paying the 2650 for the cost of the 1700 put, resulting in net positive cash flow of $540. And so let's now move to the day these options expire on April 6th. And as you can see, the index did indeed find support in the area the trader suspected in that 1700 to 1725 level, closing at 1754.46 on the day that the put credit spread expired. And so we can at this point assign a final valuation on this put credit spread, which is straightforward because after accounting for the $540 in initial positive cash flow, both the 1720 and 1700 puts expire well below the rut closing price. And so they both go out with no value, leaving us with the final profit of $540, the initial cash flow. And of course, at any closing price from 1720 to literally infinity, we would have had that same outcome. And so as a result, we were able to dictate a giant price zone from our chosen support price of 1720 and above to infinity to enjoy a full win on the trade. And so by now, it should be pretty obvious why traders love to trade options credit spreads. What other trading style allows you to create a giant zone over which you'll make the maximum trade profit at any price within that giant zone? What other trading style allows you to have a bias such as bullish, yet still win the trade if the stock or index doesn't move at all or even moves mildly down? And finally, what other trading style allows you to pick a distant price from the current market price where you believe there to be support and then plant a trade there anytime you want? And if that support holds, even just slightly, you'll have a maximum profit win. Only credit spreads allow you that incredible flexibility. And so it should be no surprise that pro traders use credit spreads all the time. Now, if you'd like to learn three more option strategies that our pro traders use, including the unique options trick that allows you to make money while you wait to buy stocks or ETFs at the price you want, and the options income strategy that allows you to make consistent money, whether the market goes up, down, or sideways, and how to make money on a stock or index trade, even if you're outright wrong on the direction, then click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen. That will open up the free workshop registration page in a new window. So don't worry, you won't lose this video. Or you can register directly for free at optionsclass.com. Believe me, you don't want to miss this. So pause this video, sign up now, and then resume watching.